Hello, this is Anthony bringing you the fourth installment of my N-Scale Diorama How-To Series. This series will take you through all the steps necessary to create a realistic scene for a standalone diorama or as part of a model train layout. So please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future installments. In this video, we will walk through the process of adding rock faces to a diorama or layout scene. The method I'm using today is a fairly common one, which has well-established, readily available supplies to make it easy. I start with the use of rubber molds, in this case those distributed by Woodland Scenics, and include easy-to-follow instructions. The castings are made out of lightweight hydrocal plaster, but other plasters will work just as well. All of my modeling for my layout are designed to be portable, so I'm using lightweight products as often as I can. The container provides a handy chart to help you choose the best products for your particular application. After thoroughly mixing the plaster using a craft stick, I first spray the molds with water. The water helps the castings come out of the molds after they've dried. For this diorama, I fill the molds completely, but if you need rocks with less depth, you will simply alter how much you add to the molds. After filling the molds up to the brim, I give the molds a bit of a shake or tapping motion to make sure the plaster settles into all the crevices of the mold. And then I suspend the mold using the bowl I mix the plaster in to ensure for an even drying and to prevent the rocks coming out flat from sitting on the surface of the table. After leaving the plaster to dry overnight, I peel back the mold to carefully remove the rock castings. It can be a little tricky to get them out without damaging them, but if you're patient, it shouldn't be a problem. Once they're out of the mold, there is a little bit of cleanup, which I do just using my bare hands and my fingernails to make them ready for use on the diorama. I spent some time testing and figuring out where I wanted to attach each casting and in some cases doing a little more shaping of the foam so they would sit at the right depth. There are several ways to attach them including applying sculpt -a mold or other types of plaster to the foam and then embedding the rocks into it but I chose to use a hot gun glue or I should say a hot glue gun to attach them. I also had to work a bit to make sure there was clearance for the bridge bent pilings. As you can see, this required some test fitting and additional carving and shaping of the foam before I was ready to finally glue the rocks in place. After attaching all the rocks, I got to work with the sculpt mold to incorporate them into the landform. To paint the rocks, I'm using just two colors, a flat or matte finish acrylic paint, a black paint called licorice, and a wicker white. I picked these up at Walmart, but any inexpensive acrylic paint will do. A different technique would require adding a lot of water to the paint to create a wash. For this diorama, I'm not using a wash technique, but I still add a little water to the paint because the plaster is quite porous and has a tendency to absorb the paint into it. I start out with the darkest color first, and then by adding successive coats of lighter shades of gray, I produce the illusion of depth, shadowing, and sunlight reflecting off the rocks. The first coat is applied to the rock making sure that all the crevices are covered. The following coats are applied with the flat end of the brush, ensuring that the last and lightest colored application only touches the outer edges of the rock. For the last coat, making sure to have very little paint on the brush to provide more control and not get too much paint on the rocks by mistake. If for whatever reason you make a mistake or you just don't like the results, it's easy to simply repeat the process 
until you are satisfied. And here is a look at the results. I hope this short demonstration was helpful. Next time on the Model Train Diorama Series, the road crew will be going strong, laying blacktop and spreading rock for a gravel dirt road. Thank you for watching, and if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.